So in our QoS series of videos to now, we've been talking about a per port policer on the Catalyst 3750. So what this means is we have a switch with a port, phone attached, we've been policing on that port there. The problem is we can put our PC in the back of a phone and we can mark our traffic from the PC with values of EF, CS3, AF41, whatever you choose, and those values will also potentially fall into those classes within our MQC policy map. So take a look here, here's our per port policer, we've got it on the phone port supplied over here, but while our classification is just matching on the DCP value. That doesn't mean to say the DCP value, uh, this traffic is coming from the actual phone, it could be coming from the attached PC in the PC port, and we've got a problem at that point in time because we're policing to a value of 90.5 and any excess traffic we're going to drop it and hence this is very risky because if we do have any traffic emerging from the PC with a value of EF expedited forwarding 46 to remind you okay we could potentially be dropping our RTP packets coming from the actual physical phone itself so this is risky it's not granular enough if you like and this is a problem We've got per VLAN policer. That means we've got a bunch of phones. Let's say we've got two phones. We're policing the aggregate of all those devices. So let's just assume we've got 100K for each phone. We could police to 200K. Well, there's a problem there in the sense that we could potentially have 200K coming from this phone, this device here, and zero from there. Ideally, we want it to be 100K from each device. Okay, but. When we're doing per VLAN policing, we don't have that level of granularity. And also, when we come to add more devices, we have to continuously update our policer. The number of devices is going to be dynamic, and our policed value is statically defined. That's a problem. That's no good. So whenever we're policing uh, a uh, you know a phone, specific phone, each, each individual phone to uh, a value, 100K, for example, signaling to 32K, video to 5 meg, Whenever we are policing, we want to be using a per port per VLAN policer. And that's what the remainder of this video is going to be discussing. So with our per port per VLAN policer, we've got a hierarchical policy map. We're going to start off with the parent policy. And so this is the policer phones over here. We've got three classes. We've got class voice, which is incoming traffic with value of EF. We've got signaling inside there we've got video and we've got our default which is our access group remember the documentation specifies that class class default that one that's built into ios okay the policy is not enforced on a 3750 which is why i've got an access list permit uh, with permit ip any any all traffic and we've got this class matching on the access group and that's our default class we'll be writing everything to zero okay on my platform the 3560 as i specified in the previous video it works for me but on the documentation the 3750x platform uh, they specify that the policy within the class class default is not enforced that's why i've gone in and done this incremental bit of work here for that default class okay so we've got four classes now in each class, remember, this is the incoming traffic. These DCP values are the incoming traffic from the physical device attached, our IP phone. So we're using that value to classify the different types of traffic. We have to have some set action. Remember, it's best not to trust hardware limitations, hardware problems there. So it's best to set the DCP values. It feels like it's redundant, but it's not. It's very important that we do actually go in and set the value. For example, voice. It's coming in with EF. We're classifying on it. Well, why on earth should I set it to EF? It already is EF. Well, think of it as an implied set DCP zero existing in iOS within the MQC. So we do have to have some set action. It will actually complain. iOS will complain if you try to apply this with no action whatsoever. We have to do something. Okay, so we've got our set values, and we're setting uh, voice to 46, video to 34, signaling to 24. Everything else is zero. Within each class, we have a policer. I'm going to clear up the ink at this point in time, make things a little tidier. 
So we've got this policer. So I've matched on voice EF, I'm setting EF, and then I'm invoking a policer. This is what I mean by the hierarchical policy map. We're having a policy map called within a policy map. And what we're doing in this child policy is we are classifying on phone ports. So phone ports down here is our device, our interfaces where phones are connected. Okay, so we've got phone ports uh, as a class in there and we're policing to 93K or whatever the value uh, we've chosen is. So 93K is a good estimate for G711, G722 call. Burst, we've dealt with this in another video. Go with the minimum value, that's 8,000 bytes. We'll talk about that separately. And the exceed action here is drop. Okay, so what have we done? What we've done is we've got one policy, we're classifying our incoming voice RTP traffic and we're setting the DSCP. Then we're invoking another child policy. So the previous policy is called the parent policy. In the child policy, we're going on each and every port. So there's multiple instances of this police are going to be running. We're policing on this in this interface as well as that interface. And we're applying a policer. We're policing one G711, G722 call. Any excess traffic is going to be dropped. We're doing something very similar for the signaling class. We are setting the signaling to CS3. This is our skinny or SIP traffic set to CS3, our uh, decimal value 24. And then we're invoking a child policy inside the child policy on those same ports. We are saying we're going to police the 24K and any excess traffic. We're going to invoke the police DSCP mappings table where we typically write 24 down to 8. We covered that in another video, but just as a reminder, we've got this police DSCP mapping table and we have 24, 24 that one there, 24 goes down to 8. So anything in excess of 24Ks worth of signaling traffic coming in from each one of these phone interfaces, one of these ports, any excess traffic is going to be transmitted, but with a lower value of scavenger class, which is CS1 DSCP value of 8. And the same thing for video, 34, that goes to 8 as well. We've changed those mapping tables as well. So we're doing something similar there on video traffic. We're setting AF41. We're invoking a child policy where we are going to be policing to 5. That shouldn't be gig. That should be meg. Let me just change that from G to M, which is one of the cool things you can do now. You don't have to put the zeros in. So strictly speaking, I could put K there and K there. In fact, the value we did in the previous video was 90.5k. I can put decimals in half k increments. So you can see here, then there's a hierarchical policy map in action. Now, in order for these interfaces to be using the, uh, the uh, policy, this hierarchical policy that we we're applying on the SVI down here, okay, so we're applying the parent policy within the VLAN interface. In order for that to actually take effect, we must go to those individual ports to which the phones are connected and instruct them that we're not going to be in processing any MLS QS commands inside the interface, but rather we're going to be using the SVI. So we have this command MLS QS VLAN based. So what we've achieved here is very similar to what we had in the per port policer in the sense that we have a policer taking place, but this is only going to be applied for traffic on the voice VLAN. That's the critical thing here. Okay, so we have to have a police applied in a child policy. We can't apply policers in the parent policy. So this is why we've got this hierarchical policy map in action there. This is why we can't just simply go inside here and put a policer in. We want to do it per port. So there are the ports specified down here in the bottom right hand side of the page. Okay, and we're doing it in a child policy. So we're doing it on the SVI. So it's not as if we're policing the aggregate to 93k for video or 90.5k 90, 90 there's multiple instances of this police running so each port defined inside the match input interface down here is being pleased to that value so it's per port in the sense that we've defined the ports down there per vlan it's only running on the voice vlan so we don't have any policing taking place for traffic on the data vlan so that pc port connected to pc in the back of the phone is not going to be police. We can have a separate policer on the data VLAN, the access VLAN. That's absolutely fine, but that's a separate policer. That's not going to be uh, taking, uh, occupying room of this uh, police value down here that we have. So here's our one of the interfaces 
to which the phone is connected right now, and I've got the MLS QoS VLAN base command configured. And so if I did try and apply anything else in this interface, so let's just try putting in MLS QoS trust costs, it just won't accept it. It's saying it's VLAN based. Anything you're going to be doing inside of here is not going to be applied. So if I have a policy map test, and then I go to the interface and I do a service policy input test, it won't accept the policy map. It's saying you've already got policy map applied. We're running VLAN based. So let's just take a look at the SVI right now. And we've got service policy input police of phones. And if I modify the value there, if I modify anything inside the policy map, so let's just say we're modifying it. I've Somehow I've got 10K there. I'm policing RTP traffic to 10K. That's nonsense. So let's go inside there and modify that value to be 90.5 that's just for one call so 90.5 K now watch what happens it detaches the policy from the actual SVI so if I go in there again and look at VLAN VLAN 102 it looks like I gave you false information I was modifying traffic in a child policy I think if I modify in a parent policy, okay, so let's just, oh, no, it just took its time there. Okay, there we go. It just took a bit of time there. It was correct information. You see here, not allowed to modify attached child policy map, police voice, and it's now detached. So we always, when we, whenever we want to modify the class maps in the parent or the child, okay, you learn something new every day, then you have to, it's just best to always remove it from the SVI. So it will be gone now, okay? And then you have to put it back in. Just remember to do that. So you can't make any modifications without detaching and reattaching to the SVI. A couple more points before we get done in this video. I mentioned this in previous videos. The order within your policy is very, very important. We never want to have default class, which is the permit IP any any. We never want to have that above anything. It's always got to be the last class Order is important within a policy map. Order within a class is unimportant. So don't worry about the order here. It's okay. Everything within a class will be processed. Okay, but certainly the policy map is top down, first match and quit. So once we match, uh, for example, video traffic, AF41 is, is matched there. We have class video. We apply the set. We apply this, the child policy, and then we'll quit out of this policy. Final thing to say then is, and this is a bit of bad news, uh, the bad news is there's very little you can do in terms of show commands on our switch. The show MLS QoS commands, show policy map commands, you will not see any policing taking place. So that's one of the limitations of this per port per VLAN policer. Oh, um, on the per port policer, you can use the show MLS QoS um, interface statistics command. But with a purple per VLAN policer, this is not going to show you any out-of-profile, in-profile packets. It will not show you the policer in action.